Good morning, and welcome to St. Peter Catholic Church. Please stand and join us as we sing our opening hymn, Come, Worship the Lord, number 780 in the Black Hymnal. Oh 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today we celebrate the 16th Sunday in the Ordinary Time. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and ask God for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you have chosen the will of your Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the Spirit. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. 
I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble. And none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right path. For his name's sake, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing. I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foe. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing. and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He has made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh 
abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Praise the Lord. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and thought. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in a boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I would like to apologize if I look and act like a zombie today. I was yesterday in Pueblo, and I was uh, returning back late at night during this uh, crazy storm. So it was like a white knuckle drive, and, and uh, it was very tiring, both physically and mentally. So if I look a little bit like I'm not fresh, it's not because I didn't take a shower this morning, but because I'm really tired. Um, but again, no worries. After this mass, I'll take my rest. But I was family in a sense of what Jesus wants for us, and the theme of this gospel is rest. So I thought, well, that is a very fitting theme for me. And I was, I was preparing, I was thinking like, what, the, what am, am I going to do later on to rest? If I'm going to take some nap, if I'm going to, to go out and, and just be outside and, and just do little, and maybe just uh, sit outside and kind of feel the, the nature around, or maybe for a walk or maybe some other things. And, and then I realized that Jesus gives his disciples a very good guidance or guideline, if you will, how to rest. It's something that we think that we know how to do, but I bet that many of you have experienced that when you went on vacation, you went for some time off, you came back and you didn't feel like you were rested. Like you came back to work and you feel, oh, I need another vacation. Uh, again, I feel like that sometimes, but it's probably because I'm not resting well. So if we do go back to the gospel of today, Jesus gives his disciples more or less three steps in which we can 
benefit uh, in resting well? First and foremost, uh, it happens in a context when the disciples have just completed a very uh, difficult, challenging task. They were sent two by two to different villages, to different towns to evangelize, to prepare the ground for Jesus, to uh, tell the good news that kingdom of God is at hand, to heal the sick, to cast away demons, to even bring people back to life, to perform miracles. And that was a very challenging task. Again, they're just human beings. They're not like God. They have limitations that are pertaining to the human capacity. So they've spent probably weeks, if not months, going this, doing this evangelization work, and they finally come back and they report. They report to Jesus what happened. This, in fact, is the very first step of resting well, is self-reporting. You see, when we are thinking about resting, we think mostly about resting our body. Like we're thinking about, I'm going to go to like the resort and I'm going to lay on the beach and then do nothing, right? Or I'm going to go and, and maybe even go at home and for a week or two and I have my time off, I'm just going to do nothing. Just eat and sleep and nothing else. And then uh, we forget that the rest is not only pertaining to our flesh, but also to our spirit and to our soul. So when Jesus recognizes it's his disciples that they are tired, first he encourages them to share their story. This is the first step of rest for us too. This is something in which we can call it self-reflection, something that we can call it an, an internal, inter, interior life, uh, interior, internal forum, if you will. Something in which maybe sometimes we're not even living it. So, see, we may have the perception like, yeah, that's, Father Thomas, you, you want us to go to Jesus and to pray, right? That's what you want. That's, just, that's the recording that you're talking about. Well, this is great, but that's not what I mean. I mean that Jesus wants to hear from us what is going in our lives. And not just the, the reporting on the events, but rather what is those, what are those events, what are those situations and stories are causing in our hearts. Because Jesus is interested in our internal life. So when the apostles are telling the story of what happened, it's not just the external, external aspect of it, but is it how does that transform you? How did what you've experienced change you? How did it affect you? What did you find challenging? What did you find easy? Or what was the most difficult thing? And what was you were expecting a difficult thing and maybe became a very simple one? This is something that, that we do not do enough. Now, people are aiming for some sort of Eastern meditations, for yoga, for other things that are alien to our, uh, to our faith. And yet, Christ is inviting his disciples to go into their inner room and reflect on what happened in their lives. This is the necessary first step for our rest because we know we need to know where we're at. We need to recognize what is our starting position because if you have the best GPS in the world but the GPS cannot find your location, it's not going to lead you anywhere. And Jesus wants us to give us or be this GPS for us when it comes to rest. Sometimes when I was younger, I, I know that I was very active in that self-reflecting thing to the point that I even scared people because I used to talk to myself a lot. Uh, you can imagine me, I was going to Mass every day and I lived about two miles away from the church. I was going those two miles back and forth talking to myself and I'll imagine like in the middle of the night and then they have someone who's talking to themselves and I'm passing some other people. They, first they probably think that I'm crazy, then they're gonna be scared or the other way around. But that self-reflection is a necessary thing. Not necessarily out loud, but, but we need to speak to Jesus, but speak in a way that we hear it. Because Jesus, God knows everything that happens in our lives. So that reflection is not really for him. Jesus knew what happened in the apostles' task of evangelizing. He knew it, but he wanted them to say it so that they could hear it. Again, that's the first step of, of rest, of good rest, is recognition where we're at, what moves us, like what things are, are maybe bothering us in our hearts, what things are, are laying heavily on our hearts. Because that self-reflection is the starting point, and again, in knowing what we need to do next. Because the second thing is going to a deserted place. And yes, when we think about desert, we think about place of isolation, place of uh, you know, removing any obstacles, removing any distractions. But in the Gospel of Mark, that deserted place is not just a description of place. It's not just saying, oh yeah, they went to desert. But that word that was used by Mark, 
Mark writes very short gospel. It's the shortest one, just 16 chapters. And when Mark's, Mark writes something, it is absolutely, totally intentional. The word that he writes about the disciples' destination when they went to a deserted place is the exact same word that he uses when Jesus, after receiving baptism, goes to a deserted place to be tempted. So, second step is not to go away to, from all the troubles and difficulties of our life, just the opposite. is to go away to face your demons. Jesus goes to a deserted place to face temptations. We're called by Jesus to go to a deserted place not to step away from our temptations and our demons, but rather face them. One of the reasons why we return to our work after resting uh, not much refreshed but even more tired is that instead of resolving our problems, we have left them behind and then we have returned back to those problems. We have not faced them, which means that we have not resolved them, so we still need to deal with them. But Jesus went to a deserted place to be tempted. Jesus sends his apostles to a deserted place so that they can face their challenges. They can face their demons. That's the second place of rest, second step of resting. We need to challenge, allow ourselves to be challenged and face the difficulties and, and those things that are bothering us. Maybe there's a sin that is coming back, or maybe there's some sort of weakness, or maybe some addiction. Jesus does not want us to just say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be there forever. He says, no, face it. Go to a deserted place. Remove the obstacles that are not pertaining to those challenges, but focus on those challenges. What can you do better in order to face them, to resolve them? And then finally, after we have faced our challenges, faced our enemies, faced our demons, we could go to an active physical rest of our bodies, which is absolutely necessary. So we have this intellectual, spiritual, and physical rest, which only then gives us a thorough rest for our, for our person, for our humanity. Not just rest for the body because it's not enough. Not just rest for a soul, it's not enough. Not just rest for our mind, it's not enough. But rest for all three. And again, self-reflection, facing our demons, and physical rest are the steps that Jesus provides for his disciples. He gives them this guidance because he knows that those will actually allow them to fully physically, spiritually, and mentally recover and be ready for new tasks. So if you are still preparing for your vacation this season, uh, that is probably a good guidance for your time off. If you have uh, taken care of your vacation already, maybe that's a uh, reflection and guide for next time. But every time when you take a rest, make it be an intentional time of mental, spiritual, and physical rest so that you return to your tasks truly and fully refreshed. Amen. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, life from God, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on a conscious pilot, who suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who of the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The heart of Christ goes out to his flock on earth. In the name of that good shepherd, let us ask the Father to fulfill our special needs. For all the pastors of the church, that they might never let the flock of Christ be scattered, but gather it together in his name, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For those entrusted with passing on the doctrine of the church, that they may nourish us with truth and wisdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the teachers of our children, that they might impart knowledge and truth with conviction and responsibility, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those at this time who are in retreat, that they may come away and rest for a while in the silent peace of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the well-being of Tom, Dorothy, and Andy Peterson, and that God will hear the petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the souls of the faithful departed, that the blood of Christ may, we, may win them eternal peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Father of the flock, hear the prayers of your people gathered at the banquet you have prepared, and ready to offer the sacrifice of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And as usual, we have opportunity for our youngest parishioners to participate in their own offertory right in front of the altar. Our offertory hymn is The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, number 437 in the Black Book. We'll do verses 1, 2, 3, and 6.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good good of all his holy O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for live and move and have And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead. We hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. O Lord, until you come again. O Lord, until you come Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Peter and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, Jorge, his assistant bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listening graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you, in your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
forgive us this dire, dying bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but the evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, there is all joy and life be. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Shall you 
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. First, I would like to express my gratitude to all of your generosity for providing lunches last week for our Totus Tuus team, for supporting our food pantry continuously, for participating in Baby Bottle campaign, uh, for supporting our gift shop, and and also for continued support to our restoration efforts in those yellow envelopes. Uh, we greatly appreciate that support and uh, we try to make sure that that uh, support that you show to the parish helps those who are most in need. Save the date, Bear Catholic Golf Tournament will be on September 14th. On the Bear Catholic website, you can sign up for sponsorship or to register your team. This week, we celebrate the following saints. On Monday, St. Mary Magdalene. On Tuesday, St. Bridget. On Wednesday, St. Sharbo Maklov. On Thursday, St. James the Apostle. And on Friday, Saints Joachim and Anne, parents of Blessed Virgin Mary. As usual, I encourage you to take the bulletin with you today for more information. And now we will hear from Justyna, who is, a religious, uh, who is Director of Religious Education and Faith Formation at St. Peter's. Thank you very much, Father. This weekend, we are beginning to advertise the classes, the various groups that we offer at St. Peter. The classes will begin in September, but it's time to get the word out. You will see flyers at the, each of the entrances. Please take a look. We offer groups for children, youth, adults, anyone that desires to receive sacraments, anyone that desires to grow in their knowledge of the Lord. We're also in need of volunteers, whether you'd like to help us every weekend, whether you want to help with one of our retreats. We also are on this journey together, so I would invite those of you who are here in the pews to prayerfully consider being a companion on the way for those who are growing in their faith. I've heard some people say they don't feel like they are belong in our community, they don't know anyone. I ask you to volunteer. If you want to learn about your faith, I ask you to be a companion and volunteer. Every year I grow in my love of the Lord and in my knowledge of the Lord, and that is by teaching. The Lord teaches me. Please come see me in the gathering space. I'd love to talk to you and answer any of your questions. Thank you. And faith formation is more than just religious education. This is the continuous growth in understanding and knowledge of God and of, about him. Uh, this is why this is not limited just to those who are preparing to receive sacraments, but also it's open to every person of any age uh, because that growth continues for our entirety of our lives. And as we still pray for uh, the restoration of our church, you may have seen that we have removed one of the windows there in the Northern Edition. These windows will be going for restoration. And uh, thankfully, the same gentleman who has uh, restored the windows in the main area, he's also agreed to help those windows, uh, which was uh, uh, very fortunate because not many people these days are any, any longer uh, uh, having this sort of skill and uh, have are in this trade of restoration of stained glass windows. So we continuously work on a few items, uh, some of them more visible, some of them less, but that restoration is still an ongoing process. So as I said, I'm grateful for your uh, continuous support and for your prayers. Speaking of prayers, let us now stand and offer our prayer for restoration. As usual, our prayer is found in the red hymnals. Dear God, we come before you today to ask for your blessings and guidance as we embark on the restoration of St. Peter's Church building and finishing of the Youth Center. 
We pray that you will bless this project and guide us in every step of the way. We ask that you provide us with resources we need to complete this project successfully. We pray that you will give us the wisdom to make the right decisions and the strength to overcome any obstacles that may come our way. We ask that you bless all those who are involved in this project and keep them safe. May our parish be filled with your love and grace. May we be renewed in spirit and in truth. May we be strengthened in faith and hope. And may we be empowered by your presence in the most holy Eucharist. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the We are protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided, inspired by this confidence. We fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and soft. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Amen. And now we have our Eucharistic ministers who will be taking Jesus to those who are homebound and cannot be present here. Uh, one more. There you go. Is that yours? All right. And we ask some both of you as you take Jesus to those who cannot be with us. Remind them that by receiving him, they remain the members of his body. And we as other members of that same body pray for their full spiritual and physical health. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is City of God, number 707, in the Black Hymnal. Let us be. 